Hello everyone, my name is Gnana Raju. I'm a nutritionist, fitness consultant, and wellness coach. And I have 20 years of experience in this field. With my experience, I would like to present you a wonderful video on myths on proteins. So a lot of people ask me a lot of questions, a lot of doubts on the protein content. So they have a lot of doubts. So I wanted to clarify those kind of doubts through this video called myths on proteins. So there are a lot of uh, confusion, a lot of confusion on the protein, whether it's good or bad, and should we take protein, should not take protein, animal protein, vegetable protein, which is the best one. So with this video, you will get a lot of clarifications on this. And before that, let me introduce about myself. Um, my name is Gnana Raju. My wife's name is Cynthia Raju. We are into Herbalife Nutrition for last 20 years, and we are in the Chamas Club uh, position. So I was, uh, before coming to Herbalife Nutrition Company, I was a district registrar, group one officer, worked in the government of Andhra Pradesh for 10 years. And totally I have 15 years of experience in government public sector, including three years of experience as a consultant in Center for Good Governance. Uh, so I did my MSc in Zoology and I also have a lot of certifications. I am, have advanced diploma in nutrition fitness. I am certified in advanced clinical nutrition. I am also certified in nutrition and fitness consultant. I am a certified sports nutrition consultant. I am also certified exercise science specialist. I am a certified calisthenics trainer. I also am a duathlete and marathon runner, cyclist and CPRA certified Zumba Strong by Zumba instructor. So reach out to me. These are my Instagram, Facebook, website, YouTube, email and phone numbers given. So you can be in touch with us. Before coming to Herbalife, I was leading ordinary life. At the age of 27, you can see me, how I looked before. And my wife was, uh, you know, around 21 to 23 years. So you can see how we were looking like simple, ordinary life. I was having tummy at the age of 27 years, working as assistant IG, assistant inspectors and law, registration stamps. So I also worked as a district registrar in certain districts like Khammam, Nalgonda, and Vichawada. I used to use a very hectic position. Morning, I go and come back by night. That's the reason why my wife came into this field for the first time. You know, came for uh, doing something like a part-time, to kill her time. There we come across this company. And initially, we are supposed to use the product. So we tried it on ourselves. And you can, you can see the transformation with my wife. Lot of transformation. Amazing the results are there. Uh, I couldn't believe. Then I also started using. I can see the difference, you know, in her at the time of 23 years. Now she is... 46 years and uh, there I was uh, 27 years now I'm 53 years looking much much better and healthier and stronger and fitter so people are uh, telling sir you're looking much much better so I did my full marathon that is 42 kilometers running and not only me but also my wife did uh, 10 kilometers running and my including we started uh, even giving a chance to my children they grown taller and uh, all my children also in fitness and nutrition you can see the transformation and before I was having big tummy and uh, we are overcoming, becoming healthier and younger, entire family into fitness and medals and, you know, all these sports and nutrition. So after learning all these subjects, so I started uh, teaching many people throughout nation. I go, I have a lot of uh, huge business, huge team uh, you know, to train. So I keep on traveling nationally, internationally. We, uh, we are the trainers now. So if you really wanted to help people, so there is no chance, uh, you know, there is no death over here. There are a lot of chances to help a lot of people. You can see some of my team members. So, and we also uh, are invited for corporate presentation. Some companies invite us, so we go keep going there and educate them and come. And uh, we are very fortunate to get training from Jim Ron, international business philosopher, and also Maricom, our uh, Herbalife brand ambassador, you know, and we also were very fortunate to give this award uh, through our hands, you know, Herbalife Active Catch of the Match Award. And uh, we are also fortunate to have lunch with Virat Kohli, uh, you know, this wonderful opportunity for me. And also Christian Ronald is part of our company, is brand ambassador of Herbalife Nutrition. And we are so fortunate to have this registered dietitian, Susan Bowerman. So you can, she's a professor at UCLA University of California, Los Angeles. Along uh, with, you know, I also got trained from Dr. Dana Ryan, she's a sports nutritionist, sports scientist, and Dr. Candy Bradley, topmost doctor. And uh, we're also fortunate to have training from Samantha Clinton. She's a former Olympian and sports and fitness uh, you know, enthusiast. So much, you know, we are very fortunate to have these kind of doctors 
Dr. Vasilos Frankos, he worked uh, as ex head on um, dietary health supplements for USFDA. Dr. David Heber, he is my mentor in particular in nutrition uh, field. I read a lot of his books. You can see his uh, awards and degrees. And he's the topmost top five in America. So I am very fortunate to get training from this kind of wonderful professors, including Dr. Louis Gratton. And uh, we are also equally fortunate to have training from Dr. Richard Henry Carmona. He was, he is a ex 17th Surgeon General of America. He's part of Herbalife now. So now let me go into the topic. The topic is myths and proteins. A lot of confusion, a lot of, you know, myths are there, you know. So I want to clarify those uh, myths. The number one is protein increases uric acid. That's also, again, it's a false. It's not correct. It's not true. So the fact is there is no such evidence. Patients with a high uric acid are asked to reduce purine intake in the diet. Purine is not the same as protein. Proteins are different. Purines are different. So animal organs, shelf, shellfish, lamb, chicken, lentils, beans, spinach, and goat meat have a high to medium quantity of purines. Okay, so purines, you are not supposed to have much, okay, if you don't want to have uric acid. But proteins, everybody can have. For example, soy, dairy products, and eggs are actually low, lower in purines, so you can have them. So that's the reason why you cannot say everyone, you know, by intake of protein increases uric acid. No, no, no. So only those, pro, you know, patients with a high uric acid, only those people are supposed to reduce the pure intake diadite. The purines would be some proteins, you know, animal organs, like I said here. here. And the second myth is proteins causes kidney disease, which is also not correct. A high protein diet may worsen kidney function in people with pre-existing renal, that is kidney disease, because the body may have trouble eliminating all the waste products of the protein metabolism. So they still can take protein in consultation with their nephrologist. Meaning, if a person has already pre-existing kidney problem, only then doctor, he has to take advice from the doctor on how much protein he can take it. But normal people, there is no problem. Anybody can, you know, everybody can take, uh, you know, proteins because uh, it will not affect any kidney problem at all. So there is no proven causative link between proteins and kidney disorders. Pro Protein-induced changes in renal function are a normal normal adaptive mechanism, okay? So well within the functional limits of a healthy kidney. If you have a healthy kidney, absolutely you can take proteins. There is nothing wrong. There is no problem at all. So it's all myth unnecessarily going in the market. The next myth is whey protein or soy protein or casein, casein protein supplements are bad for health if you are not a bodybuilder. Meaning some people say if you are not a bodybuilder, then why are you taking these protein supplements? You don't require which is also not true. The fact is whey protein and soya protein and casein proteins are quality proteins and are very safe to consume for adults. Those with protein deficient diets can consider taking any or mix of them. However, there are fake or substandard whey or soy or casein protein powder based products sold in some markets. So buying from other sources such as Herbalife other sources are highly recommended. So you can absolutely you can take it from us. You can see the reference also, scientific evidence is there. So they are nothing to do with the, you know, um, bodybuilding. You can take, the, whether you're a bodybuilder or not a bodybuilder, you can con safely consume any kind of good quality protein supplements. There is no problem. You can see the soya protein, egg protein, milk protein, they have the high PDCA, PDCAS ratio, protein digestibility corrected amino acid score. And there is another myth prevailing is protein powders are steroids. It's not true. No, steroids are different from proteins. While protein powders are safe to consume like food, while steroids are not to be consumed generally unless in consultation with your physician or doctor. So that is the reason why steroids should be taking consultation with the doctor, but not the proteins. Proteins are safe, okay, whereas steroids are not so you have to be in consultation with your doctor. Steroids can be taken, but proteins you can anybody, everybody can able to take it because protein powders everybody take like a protein in a plate. You are thirty percent of plate supposed to be having protein. Thirty percent of the calories in our plate should come from the protein. Okay, so that's why everybody have to take it. The next myth is protein powder should only be taken post workout. That's also not true. Anytime you can take and uh, take the protein, not just only during post workout. It's a common misconception, you know, that 
you can only take only after post workout now it can take it during the lunch during the, you know um, you can while cooking food you know we can add art like atta in the roti sabji you can add, also add in sambar anywhere because protein can be heated so you require protein any source you can take it we add the protein powder in the shakes so that way also you can take it not just only before or after workout nothing like that you can take according to your requirement that's the reason why you have to be in consultation with your coach wellness coach or health coach or a registered dietitian or a nutritionist our personalized protein powder we add it in dosa or protein chapati or roti or sabji whatever so it can be cooked also so protein also comes and uh, the taste also very very good so you cannot say after workout proteins can be taken any time during the day so so the meal cost is by and large the same instead of the miss this meal you can go for a meal replacement uh, shake price is the by and large the same instead of going for high sugary high carbs high fat high calorie diet you can go for a low calorie high protein and a low carbohydrate diet okay so that makes sense so that's it in protein you know you can take any time but you have to be mindful about the time hours you know some people uh, you know after taking how many hours can able to withstand give them uh, you know they can stay without hunger that's all it matters so our nutrition shakes are there it will have both whey protein and soy protein blend so they can last for 3 to 4 hours so the shakes can be taken any time sometimes in the morning or afternoon or evening okay but there are separate shakes also there for us to take after the post workout there are separate shakes also there so it does not mean you can only take protein only post workout protein can be taken according to the requirement as per your daily needs so we take as a best breakfast also like in place of idli dosa chapati roti so we can take as a shake as a best breakfast with all the nutrition all the vitamins and minerals and proteins and this one we take it like a post workout snack we call like a rebuild strength this 24 rebuild strength it has all bcas branch chain amino acids it also has you know um, rapid uh, as a rapid um, uh, rapidly absorbing carbohydrate of 18 grams of carbohydrates and there is a ratio between protein and carbohydrate is 1.5 1.5 to 1 so it also has l glutamine so this is very good for post workout so these are designed but otherwise proteins can be taken anytime according to your requirement so that's the reason why you require a coach to design according to your requirement Right, I got it. The next uh, myth is for more the protein I consume, mean more muscle that I will get, which is also not true. Protein absorption depends on the individual protein source, age, activity, and genetic makeup of the body and body frame. So even, even if you give more protein, that need not build the muscle after certain threshold. You watch this graph, then you can understand what I'm trying to say. More the protein, not necessarily the better results because there's a limit okay depending on genetics muscle structure sport everything matters if you see this graph there are different kind of activities like uh, strength athlete is there who do strength exercises endurance athlete like doing running the sedentary individual those people don't do much activity and there's a rda recommended daily dietary relevance for some people is only 1.0 gram per weight body weight per day some people it is 1.5 gram per body weight per day. For some people it is 1.8 or 2 maximum. So there is also a limit. So that's the reason why you have to choose according to a requirement, your uh, activity level, age, weight, and body fat. Right? You, I hope you got it. So you cannot say that you know everybody more the protein I consume, more the muscle mass I will get. How much uh, you consume certain after certain limit you will not gain the muscle mass. This is very important to understand. The next one. Uh, myth is regular Indian diets are enough for our protein needs. We don't require additional protein. Our Indian diets are okay. It's not true. Most of the surveys, you know, Indian government surveys there, lot of NGOs, non-governmental organizations surveys also confirm that our diets are protein deficient. So partly it is due to our cultural habits, partly due to our busy lives. Partly also due to lack of awareness, how much protein is going inside. So we are very busy most of the time, you know, order the food, Swiggy, Zomato, anything. They come to the home and eat it. Sometimes ready-made food, we come, you know, we eat and finish it up. 
So that's the reason we cannot say our food is having all the protein, all the balanced protein every day required, you know, required requirement uh, according to your requirements. See, if we have a lot of, Cynthia, my wife has a lot of shakes. I take it shakes, my wife takes, and you know, my mother-in-law takes, my children takes. So more than 80% of Indians suffer protein deficiency as per the study. Another survey says 73% of urban rich India is protein deficient. Out of 9 out of 10 Indians don't consume adequate protein. So the survey says 91% of the vegetarians, 85% of non-vegetarians are protein deficient. Even non-vegetarians are also protein deficient. Then you ask, how, sir, how is it possible? Non-vegetarians, they eat non-veg. Only Sunday chicken, Sunday non-veg. Rest of the day, they don't take it. So that's just the once in a month or once in a two, you know, five days, once in a blue moon, they take it. So that's the reason why they everybody do not necessarily take the protein in every meal. So as per the scientific study, so it should be in all the meals every day. Every day should take the protein and in every meal also there should be at least 20 to 30 grams of protein every day. Otherwise called skewed, skewed, it's not even. So sometimes they eat a lot in the dinner. Sometimes they eat a lot in the lunch. They don't take in the breakfast. So it is skewed. It's not even. It's not balanced. So that's the reason why every study says you require to take supplement the protein because our regular general diet don't have so much of protein. And it's that we are busy life and our cultural differences are there. So why not to supplement the gap? That's what we are saying. And to digest also, sometimes you require half kilo jowar you know, 600 grams of wheat flour in a day and or 50 grams of green grams or 2 liters of cow milk or 500 grams of cheese to get 60 grams of protein per day. You can see this calculation. So, so much we cannot eat also, we cannot digest also. So, theoretically looks okay, but practically very difficult to implement it. So, another myth is the best source to get protein is from red meat. Some people say daily mutton cow we eat mutton and you'll get all the protein. Not correct. Actually, as per Harvard School of Public School, Public Health, they discourage having red meat. We have white meat. White meat is from fish, chicken, you know, duck, those kind of lean meat. Whereas uh, the red meat is from the, you know, higher, bigger the animal, bigger the fat. So from the bigger animals. So they scientists are always discouraging people to not to have red meat go for white meat, so you should be less fatty. And if the red meat mostly have cholesterol, most mostly have hidden fat. So, so that is the reason why they are asking you to go for uh, reduction of the red meat. So there is a myth, so you should not follow. Actually, I take shakes, they are plant-based and I also eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. So this soya protein and egg whites and milk protein, they are okay. They are okay instead of going for a red meat. They are best actually. In terms of PD, cast ratio, not only protein digestibility, corrected amino acid score to PD cast ratio, but also DS score number one. So DS is digestible indispensable amino acid score. That way also all these are very good. Not necessarily depend on red meat. Another myth is proteins are required only when you have any health problems. This is also wrong advice. So this is a myth. Why? Proteins are required whether you have any health problem or don't have any health problem. That is a necessity, basic necessity. Every day plate out of you know 30 per out of your daily calories, 30 percent should come from the protein. Pro means first, teen means nutrient. So if you don't give other nutrition like carbohydrates, fats, and other things, okay, body still chalega. Okay. But if you don't give protein, body goes for a toss. Metabolic wound gets disturbed. Okay. So that is the reason why you cannot afford to miss every day the right quantity of protein. Very important. Actually, the what what uh, the myth is actually otherwise is true. Proteins are required even if you have a health problem. Okay, why? Without having problem, without to prevent the health problem, if you take everyday proper protein and good nutrition, balanced diet, you don't end up in health problems at all, right? So that's the reason why you can prevent by taking a proper protein every day. Okay, so that's a myth. So the protein deficiency. What will happen if you don't give enough protein every day? So it will be leading to unintentional weight loss, not a good weight loss, no wrong weight loss. Brittle nails and other nail abnormalities, skin lesions, dry flaky or scaly skin in children's stunted growth, hair loss, you become hair become thin and brittle hair, 
anemia because hemoglobin has heme is iron globin is protein when the globin is less protein is less naturally hemo blood also will goes down edema sometimes water retention also will be there mental retardation will be sometimes they end up in mental problems weak muscle tone we call the sarcopenia and food cravings also will be irritability confusion anxiety moodiness reduced energy levels that's the reason why you got to give proper balanced nutrition every day in every meal another myth is between age 25 to 55 years there is no need of protein that is also false why i am 53 years okay my wife is 46 years so we are using protein every day you can see our difference we are looking much much better healthier and younger so everybody require proteins not the just age of 25 to 50 years children require middle age require old age people everybody require otherwise end up in a protein deficiency which causes lot of health complications which i read through just now another myth is high protein lead to bulk up and weight gain so that is why don't take protein it's also not true high protein need not bulk up for example if you eat lot of calories you bulk up you put on more weight right so you eat lot of fat you bulk up so high protein but reduce carbohydrates reduce calories reduce the unnecessary saturated fats then it will not bulk up okay so it will not make you to weight gain right so that is the reason why this is a myth you cannot just by saying high protein diet leads to bulk up and weight gain which is a myth which is not true only when you give excess calories you bulk up and when you don't exercise you may bulk up okay but if there is a so long as there the calories are less carbs are less and the bad fat is less you can still give high protein diet right you don't put on weight next one is next myth is high protein diet is bad for my health which is also not true actually otherwise so you know right actually proteins are required in every day and in every meal protein if it is given as per recommended daily dietary allowance or optimal daily dietary allowance or dr odi norms it means balanced diet as per the norms given by us fda or uh, indian med council of medical research icmr uh, or uh, by any uh, who or norms or anyone it's not called as high protein diet but a balanced diet so you have to give the protein minimum i'm talking minimum is rda best is oda optimal daily allowance so you should give according to netlis norms we are not giving even that okay suppose you give even more than that it's, it's okay for high protein diet it not give you any kind of bad health so long as you balance other things so balanced diet with the right amount of protein is needed and a very good for your body so this is again myth i said it another myth is protein should be taken only on doctor's recommendation okay which is also totally false because doctor will not come into picture here unless the, the patient is sick and the patient is under observation of the doctor right so he has any medical complication then he has to take advice of the doctor actually the other uh, the actual point is doctors mostly they write the medicine or they do surgery so diet related questions we ask over a dietitian registered dietitian or nutritionist or a wellness coach okay but you cannot day to day wise you cannot ask doctor can you give me your prescription on protein you will not give prescription on protein so protein can be taken on every day basis like how much dal i have to eat how much you know beans i can eat you are depending on you your personal requirement in spite of doctor recommending you sometimes you cannot eat also so that depends on digestion at your choice actually you cannot ask you cannot ask for doctor's advice and this whatever people are saying you know people you should take advice from the doctor not necessary general people not necessary to go to doctor for every day's protein requirement okay for general people unless you are in a you are a patient you are under doctor's observation you have any clinical related problem you know you are under observation by any doctor then you have to take advice or recommendation from your doctor the next myth is one egg is all i need to get protein one egg bus okay which is also not true one egg only gives you 5 to 6 grams of protein if your weight is 60 kg then you may need to eat about 10 eggs a day daily every day you have to eat 10 eggs so what about if your weight is 70 kilos 80 kilos 1 kilo body weight 1.8 grams of body required right for protein required so that means you require even more 
So then how, how you balance? How many? 20 eggs you take in a day, which is difficult. No digestion wise also problem. So in fact, protein in diet help control hunger, sugar craving, which help in weight loss. So diet rich in proteins, but low in carbs, low in fats, low in calories is more helpful to lose weight. So very important. Eggs will not solve the problem. It's not a one egg. You oral diet, oral protein. So somebody have to calculate how much is your required protein as per your body weight and your age and your um, activity and all that. Then able to design the program. So it's not just one egg. It will solve all the problem. No. Okay. There's a protein intake. There's a protein factor given here. Looking at the BMI, your height and weight. So you have to select the protein factor. So that's the reason why you have to approach a consultant or a doctor or nutritionist somebody how much protein required. So then you can able to design. So doctors don't come into picture here. Usually nutritionists or wellness coaches come into picture. Got it? So protein intake is very important every day. But how much to take? You have to take you know, expert advice. So the next myth is protein is only for bodybuilders and to people who exercise in gym, which is also not true. Everybody required. Why only bodybuilders? Pro means, I said, pro means first. Teen means nutrient. Okay, everybody, each time, every meal, there should be protein. Okay, but how much to take? You have to get design. How much uh, levels you require? What kind of protein? Easily digestible or, you know, slow digestible, fast, uh, you know, absorbing protein, slow absorbing protein. Okay, complete protein or incomplete protein. How to take the choice all or again, to be customized or personalized as per your requirements, right? So, bodybuilders, they require said one kilo of body weight required 0 0.8 grams to one kg, uh, 1, 1.5 or something like that. Sometimes you may require two grams also as a case, some cases. And um, so you require protein as per your daily needs, your activity and your, um, um, the acid test is your body composition. Body composition analysis we, we give through our you know scanner. We call it like a bio impedance analyzer, bioelectrical impedance analyzer or BI method. You know, we, we give, uh, we call, also call like, uh, you know, the scale, the body composition analysis, analysis report. BDBCA, body composition analysis report, it gives how much is the muscle mass percentage in your body and how much is the fat percentage, how much is the fat content in your body. Actually, on an average, for a man, supposed to be between 30 to 33 percent. Okay, for a woman, 30 to 33 percent muscle mass should be, whereas for a man, it should be 33 to 36 percent. So the the acid test is this body composition, not necessarily not just the weight. So if muscle mass is less, you got to improve the muscle mass. Otherwise, you end up in some kind of health challenges. Immunity also may go down when you don't give proper protein. Okay, uh, so even next myth is. Even I lack daily intake of enough protein, it will not affect my health, which is also totally absurd, wrong. So if you don't give, you have to face protein deficiency cases. You have to face the music. So protein is a macronutrient, not a micronutrient, meaning you have to give proper way. Every day you require in every meal. So it's actually helpful for you, growth, development, repair, regeneration, metabolism, cell functioning, enzymatic functions, hormonal and blood circulation will be affected. So all these are there. You can see this protein cravings will come. Hunger will come. Lots of muscle mass will be if you don't give proper protein. Impaired immune function or slow healing injuries. So injuries will not heal properly. Immune system goes down. Frequently you get the problems, health challenges. Fatty liver also affects your symptoms. Sugar cravings, weakness and fatigue, skin, hair and nail problems, risk of bone fractures. So much is there. Even for children, stunted growth, they cannot concentrate properly because of lack of protein deficiencies. You require, whether you are a bodybuilder, or do exercise, don't exercise, do, don't exercise, everybody require protein. The next myth is only fast digesting protein can build muscle. No, you know, there are proteins are there which are slow digesting, slow absorbing protein like soy and fast absorbing protein like whey. So sometimes mix also, there's sometimes casein is a slow and, you know, moderate. You know, fast. So you have to choose right kind of proteins. You know, so you cannot say only fast digesting protein can build a muscle. The fast digesting protein again may be, you know, gives you hunger after half an hour, one hour. 
because they're digested again if you hungry so then you again end up in eating more uh, food the, the more calories and more fat make up so that's the reason why you have to see the you know protein time release profile so then accordingly our coach will design the diet so plus also see the completeness the high quality of the protein check your protein quality so is it pd cas ratio is one or dr score is one so if their score is one and above then it will be great so the next myth is you can only absorb 30 grams of protein per meal, which is also not true. Intake is depending on us. You can give more also, but how it forms, where it goes is a different person. Okay, so only 30 grams of protein only it can absorb. No, it can take even more also, but how it responds body, you know, it in different cases. Question takes another uh, video. There are again, um, how you give, what form of protein you give. There is concentrate, so like soya concentrate, soya isolate, soya hydrolysate. So this soya isolate form, usually we give in Herbalife, not in concentrate, not in hydrolysate, because in concentrate, less, less quantity of protein will be, okay, less percent of protein. Whereas hydrolysate, you know, though it is digestible, though it's a high in protein, but it don't have all the nutrition because the, when you dilute with water, some of the nutrients will be compromised. So that's the reason we give the best source isolate. So isolate, way isolate, something like that. So the question is, you can have, you can give any kind of protein, not necessarily, you know, fast absorbing, not necessarily slow absorbing. You can give your blend also, depending on your requirement. The next myth, I eat daily dal or beans. It is enough for my daily protein needs. That's also not true. All proteins are not equal. Some proteins like soy, egg, whey, casein, chicken, beef, etc. are complete proteins and have good pd cash ratio or dias score in terms of absorption. But many other sources are not. Okay, so that's the reason why these pulses and dals and beans, they are tasty, but sometimes they are in, they are incomplete proteins. Sometimes to make it complete, so we have to use, you know, mix and match, that's called complementary proteins. But in, because of our culture, we don't uh, mix and match. We usually take either this or this. Today is this curry or other that, that curry. So that's the reason why there is no proper balance. So they're mostly they are incomplete proteins, whereas soya protein and um, you know egg and whey protein, those are only complete proteins. So you cannot say I eat daily dal, I eat beans, so my protein is, take, is taken care. How much are you taking also equally matters. If that is true, then why this survey is saying that you know 80% of more than 80% of Indians suffer from protein deficiency? Why the surveys are saying 73% of urban rich India is protein deficient? Nine out of 10 Indians don't consume adequate protein. So why the surveys are saying 91% of vegetarians and 85% non-vegetarians are protein deficient? So that is, you know, by and large, Indians, we have poor muscle mass. By and large, though there are very rare exceptional cases, because our skewed you know, intake of the protein. So we don't take every day in every meal according to the requirement. How much ever we require, we don't take it. We take it just for the sake of taking, but not necessarily we'll absorb, not necessarily we complete protein. There are essential amino acids. All nine essential amino acids should also be there. Okay. Next one, next myth is proteins, diets, damage our bones by increasing acidity and consequent release of calcium to counter it, which is also not correct. Actually, other way is wrong. You know, as per, you know, uh, reports of osteoarthritis, uh, you know, um, then um, osteoporosis, most of these reports, those, uh, you know, organizations, they're given European Society for Clinical and Economical Aspects of Osteoporosis, Osteoarthritis and Musculoskeletal Disease. And by the International Osteoporosis Foundation, they're given other ways down. It actually says, no scientific evidence showed the correlation between high protein diets and bone density issue. Actually, the opposite to proteins help in increasing the bone density. These reports say a balanced diet with sufficient protein intake, regardless whether of animal or vegetable source, benefits bone health when accompanied by adequate calcium intake. Foods high in protein include dairy, foods, meat, poultry, and fish, as well as eggs, vegetable source of protein include legumes. They usually have calcium. So when there is a more protein, usually there will be uh, bones, bone density will increase. That's what the scientific studies. So you can actually good way to increase the bone density is increase the more muscle also, more protein also. Another myth is 
Animal protein is necessary. Animal protein is necessary for a healthy diet. No, 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 no. Vegetarian diet also equally good for a healthy diet, right? Not necessarily it can depend on non-veg. Okay. Next myth is eating more protein help with weight loss. No, 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 no. Not necessary. Okay. Protein actually may have improved the muscle mass. But when you take, apart from protein, like large quantity of carbohydrates, large quantity of calories, large quantity of um, fats, then how it will be helpful for weight loss? So now nah, it's just only by adding more protein, but you have to check other things also. Should be less, right? So that's the reason why this is a myth. It's not a fact. The next myth is I cannot meet my protein needs on a plant-based diet, which is also a myth because plant sources also there are complete proteins i said about soy protein remember so this is the one of the best example soy nuts lentils black beans peas quinoa they also have the you know plant based proteins so you can choose any kind whatever you like like though soy is the best but still you can get from the plant sources you cannot say only non veg is the best non veg source is the best no, even plant-based proteins also can do the equal quantity of protein. And of course, you have to design according to your calorie requirement and your absorption. So this is what uh, some of the chart, uh, you know, charts are given about animal and plant source proteins, depending on the BCAs quantity, branching amino acids, availability, and absorption, lactose intolerance, nutrition content, all that amino acid profile. There's another myth saying, stopping protein drinks affect my muscle mass. Protein powders create addiction, which is also totally absurd, not true, okay? No, pro protein does not have the power of addiction, but sugars are addictive in nature. Actually, sugars are eight times more addictive than the cocaine, but proteins are not, okay? You, if you don't eat dal, if you don't eat beans, you don't become addictive, but with the sugars, sweets, people become addictive. Rice, you know, if you, they say, without eating rice, without eating chapati, roti, Without eating uh, you know, the sweets, I cannot live. That's why that's how they become addictive. So you can stop protein anytime. You can actually take protein anytime. It's not addictive. You can start and stop anytime. You have just have to see your balance, balance of protein, overall protein requirement. Not necessarily depend on the protein powders. But if you can able to manage the ideal required proteins in a day-to-day -day life, it's okay. You don't require any supplements. Usually it is not the case. Usually you saw the surveys. That's the reason why it's a good idea to take supplements, the you know protein powders, and it by stopping it will not give you any weakness. Okay, if you can able to maintain overall uh, general protein level levels, then when you don't give get enough protein, then tiredness and weakness and flabbiness will come. If you don't give enough, not just not necessarily stop by stopping. You can overall ultimately you have to balance your protein requirements. I am coming to the final part about the myths and benefits of soya protein. Soya protein is well studied by soya organization. It's a high quality complete plant protein. It has all nine essential amino acids. So that's why we call it like a complete protein. It's very good for your body, body and you know your uh, uh, your uh, all the requirements of the protein. And uh, soya it does not have only protein. There is something you have only protein. Okay, whereas soya beans, they have not just only protein, but also some good quality carbohydrates and good fat and magnesium and potassium also there. Some of the nutrients also get. This is my point. It also has a PD cast ratio of one. So that means very high quality protein, digestibility also good. And in terms of environment also, energy efficiency in production also very good compared with, you know, other kinds of sources of protein. And water efficiency in production also very good. Okay. And as given you, this is the soy protein that stands number one in terms of PDK ratio. Research I get a support I given you. And uh, next myth is soy protein is not as effective and beneficial for building muscle as whey protein. No, 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 no. Some people only say whey, whey protein. No, soy protein is as effective for building muscle as that of whey protein. I given you the reference also. It's very good. And one of the most digestible of all the proteins, soy protein. Easy to digestible. You can see. Compared with casein and uh, egg whites and beef and pea, pea, uh, pea protein and the kidney beans, uh, compared with all the things, this is the best protein. And it also gives us satiety. It can stand, uh, make you to have, you know, rim, hunger free for next two to three hours. Whereas whey protein makes you again feel hungry immediately. 
So the next myth is soy protein contains phytoestrogen, therefore not good for men. This is also not true. It has nothing to do with any kind of um, um, phytoestrogen. It has estrogens, but it has nothing to do with interfering with the phytoestrogen, you know, uh, woman estrogen. So it's nothing to do with interfering with the testosterone levels. So these phytoestrogens are different from regular estrogens. So actually it's good. Another way, many studies reported, it's good for the men and equally good for the women. Okay, so be confident, happily you can take it. And I've given you all the sources, references and other things. And the next myth is soy isoflavones in soy foods act as estrogen in the body, causing hormone imbalance and numerous health issues, which is also not true. Okay, it will not give any kind of health issues and woman friendly. Actually for women, soy isoflavones are very good. So equally men also, it's very good. It actually will be helpful. That I've given you references also. And the last myth is soy protein not to be taken for patients with hypothyroidism. Not at all true. Okay. Many studies suggest that this eating pattern is not harmful to people with normal thyroid health. Normal thyroid level, people, everybody can take it. If you have a thyroid deficiency, still you can take it. Cynthia, my wife has, you know, thyroid uh, for so long, but still she lost weight. She still, she's looking good. Okay. Uh, so anybody can take it with thyroid, without thyroid can take it. But only thing is some people may have youth thyroid cases where you know that iodine production goes down, thyroxine levels go, goes down, then maybe ask the you know check your reports and ask the doctor to increase the thyroxine levels, increase the iodine levels. The main dosage of the drug has to be a little more increase, right? Dosage of the hormone should be increased more, should be optimized according to your requirement, but does not make you, you know, not uh, make you harmful of soil. Okay, this is what study says. However, hypothyroid adults need not avoid soya foods. Soya foods have, have a lot of health benefits. So while having uh, thyroid, hypothyroidism, still you can have soya foods, but just have to check in case you require, you know, dosage, it may have to increase for a few cases. But by and large, most of the cases, they can still, normal th thyroid people, they can still have as usual. So I will not disturb thyroidism, right? Got it? I given my wife also example. This soya protein is it healthy? I given no harmful effects. A woman diagnosed with even breast cancer consumes soy in terms of mortality. So ladies having breast cancer, they still have nothing, no problem. They still have it. So actually, other research says overall consuming higher levels of soy is associated with a 21% reduction in the risk of death compared to women who consume soy at a lower level. So some people, some women, they don't consume soy at a higher level. Only some ladies, they take higher level. So who has more death rate? Those people who don't take okay, soy. So that means who take more soy, they have more chances of survival. That means actually this is more good. Okay, this again, research article. So happily you can take, it's very perfectly all right. Everybody can take it happily. So do you want a personalized plan for you on diet and fitness and lifestyle? please do contact me, consult us. We have 20 years of experience in this field. We know how to personalize according to your requirement. But if you already have a Herbalife coach or a wellness coach, please don't contact me. You already have a coach. If you don't have any such coaches, then please do contact me for help. We are there to help you. Call me for personal consultation. You can reach out, reach out to me through Instagram, Facebook, website, YouTube, email, phone numbers are given. Please always join us. We make the world healthier and happier. That is our you know, goal. That is our purpose. Our company purpose is that. So we wanted to make everybody healthier and happier. So I hope uh, that's the reason why I made this video for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. So if you like this video, you wanted to uh, inform this video to many people, share this, like this video, subscribe to my channel, share this video to many people so that they also get benefited out of this. Many people are not aware of all these things. So thank you so much for uh, watching this video. Thank you for your patience. Wish you all the best. God bless you. Thank you so much. Tata, see you. Bye-bye.